welcome to another Sunday service and we're glad that you've taken your time out of your day to really spend time with the Lord and to worship his name. Uh, so feel free to sing along and to uplift him even more and to really rely on him during these times. So um, yeah, feel free to worship along with us. Jesus. 
to be here today lord to uplift you and to worship and to praise your name i thank you for guarding us and keeping us safe through this world pandemic lord and for allowing us to draw closer to you and to draw nearer to you for giving us the time to read the word to pray and to spend time as a family lord i ask that you help us to continue with this despite what happens in the world to continue to get to know you lord to spend time with you to prioritize you lord it shouldn't take a lockdown to really want to know you lord and i ask that you keep that passion and that want to get to know you burdened with all of us lord i also pray that you help those who are less fortunate than us who may not have what we have who may not be allowed to praise you the way that we praise you who may not be allowed to sing and to claim you in front of all lord please be with them stay make sure that they stay safe lord and guide them lord i ask that you also help us to really stick to you lord and to be ambassadors for your kingdom, Lord, so that when people see us, they see you, Lord. They see your kindness, they see your love, they see your generosity, Lord. I thank you for all that you've done for us up until now, Lord. And I ask that you continue to stay with us, Lord, um, and that you help us to keep faithful and to remain strong in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hi, guys. This one I'm going to be talking about acting on God's word, even when it doesn't make any sense. Um, so right now we live in an uncertain time because of Corona and no one really knows what the future is going to look like and everything around us is changing and um, the only unchanging work we're able to stand on is the word of God. So in times like this, our experience, our knowledge or even our money will help us through the tough times and it's only obeying his word even when it doesn't make sense that will make us fruitful and lead us to follow our God-given destiny. Um, so just to start, if you guys could open up your Bibles to Luke chapter 5, and I'm going to be reading um, from verse 1 to 11. Okay, so the first verse starts with, One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him, listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen, who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, you've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the son of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. So we would desire to be successful in what we do and get something out of it. But at times it just it, it doesn't happen as we planned it to. And we have to thank God for the wisdom and the knowledge that He could provide us with and the wonderful people He brings to us who can share their knowledge as well. And um, at times like this, like Peter and his friends did. We fail to see the results we want after working and like laboring and trying as hard as we can. 
And it's easy to give up in times like this. But we have to know that God's with us. Um, not only when we're successful, but when we fail to achieve what we originally set out to do and like what our original goals were. And we have to know that God's there to guide us. Um, so as humans, we have a tendency to, to see the facts and rely on our own understanding to decide whether it's a possible or like, whether it's an impossibility without consulting God or listening to him first. However, from this passage, you can see that just like Simon, the Lord wants us to cast our net. And um, like we're entering into a totally new environment now because of COVID-19 and um, social distancing measures and lockdowns have had such devastating effects on us. And as we can see in the text, in times of struggle and strange times, strangeness, listening to the voice of God, no matter how odd it may seem, is the wisest, wisest thing to do. So as experts in fishing, Peter and his friends used and applied like all their knowledge and like their experience to catch fish all night, but they couldn't catch a thing. And um, bearing in mind, like they grew up with this profession, so they knew what they were doing and they knew the sea and what the right times were to catch fishes. And yeah, they, they, they knew what they were doing. Like they, it wasn't like it was a hobby or something they did for pleasure. It was their livelihood. So you can imagine like their frustration and despair to go back home, like with nothing and empty handed. Um, so they were washing their net to go home and waiting for Jesus to finish his talk so they could secure the boat. And um, I feel like a lot of us have been in this kind of situation where we've done everything in our power, be it like exams, a project, homework or anything, but we ultimately fail. And um, I think the passage shows us not, not to lose hope and that there is hope and a way out as long as Jesus is with you. And I think there are three main things we can take from this passage about hope. And um, it tells us what we should do in a time of crisis or um, in uncertain times such as these. And um, I think the first point is that there's hope in a crisis when the Lord is with us. Um, so in the scripture, we read, um, it seems like Jesus was occupied by what he was doing because um, he was teaching the crowd and there were many of the people in the crowd listening to him. He was addressing all their needs and speaking to them, like talking about his life and theirs. But all along, Jesus was aware of the disappointment of Peter and his friends for not catching the fish and he could sense their discouragement. And he knew that they hadn't caught anything after fishing all night long. And he knew what it meant to them and their families and yeah, when they got back home. But however, Jesus isn't like other people who sympathize us, like all our friends who, you know, will tell them that we've done badly in something and they'll just say, oh, that's Pete bro, or something. But Jesus isn't like that. And he'll, he'll sympathize with our situation and he'll actually, he'll actually help us through it. And he'll do the unexpected and direct us through a way um, or escape that we are never even aware of. And no matter what, Jesus never ignores our crisis and he's always mindful of us. Um, so before I move on to the second point, I just thought it'd be useful uh, <clears throat> to reference um, during the Gospel of John in chapter two. I mean, which I'm sure all of us know the story. Um, during the wedding in Cana and Galilee, they ran out of wine, which was quite an embarrassing situation because so many people were um, waiting eagerly. But Jesus was there and obviously performed the um, one and miracle of turning water into wine. And he lifted him out of a crisis and brought joy to the wedding. And I think what mattered there is Jesus' presence. Um, so I think at all times we need to make sure Jesus is with us and that we are with Jesus. Um, yeah, so on to the second point, um, there's hope in the crisis when we hear from the Lord. Um, so in Peter and his friend's case, Jesus spoke obviously physically because he was like right next to them and they're close enough to him to be able to listen to him. But sometimes when crises happen to us, um, disappointment and despair, it kind of makes us self isolate. It like takes us away from other people. And more importantly, it takes us away from the Lord. 
and we don't want to talk to anybody or listen to anyone and we keep ourselves to ourselves which is just not the way we're meant to work and um in a crisis we need to be in a place where we can hear from the lord and god sometimes god speaks through a variety of things through people through just random random instances random things even through nature and we need to be open to listen and we need to be on the lookout for god's voice because when God speaks, we receive wisdom and new possibilities arise, even when there's a dead end or suppose a dead end or something we can't, like we can't really comprehend, um, a new lifeline will be extended for us. And so Jesus spoke to his Peter and his friends and they listened. And so we should all listen for God's guidance in the same way in this difficult time we're all in. And we need to position ourselves to hear from him. And the third point I wanted to leave us with was um, there's hope in a crisis when we obey the Lord. Um, so the Lord asked people to do something that contradicts with the fishing tradition and expertise. And obviously Peter's been fishing for like his whole life. Um, and it's not like a hobby or anything like that. It's something he always does. So it seemed like a foolish thing to do, like a waste of time. And it didn't make any sense to him. He was confused, but he said, um, master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. And um, even though it didn't coincide with any of his experiences, he still trusted in the Lord. And he could have easily disregarded Jesus because it did seem like it didn't make any sense to him. But his, his risk and his faith in the Lord was so well rewarded and um, it was it was rewarded by his, beyond his wildest expectations and that was a great shock. Um, so I just wanted to conclude this with like the main point, which is in a time of crisis, we need to make sure that we are with Jesus and close enough with him to be able to hear him. And we need to prepare to obey his word even when it doesn't make any sense to our minds. And um, with that, I just wanted to end with a prayer. So if we all bow our heads. Uh, Lord, I pray that everyone listening today will open their hearts to you, Lord, and ignore what their experiences um, that they've been through their whole life tell them and what their instincts say. Because as we've learned, despite the situation we're in, you're always watching over us. And I pray that you help guide us through our lives, Lord, no matter what path we choose to take. In Jesus' name, Amen. Ah, uh, thanks guys.